To be a trader, you need that spark inside. You can't fake it or buy it. You live it. Live every trade with IG. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you, Simon. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, I've just chosen uh, some of my favorite uh, volume indicators. So rather than going through every single one of them, uh, one at a time, it'll take us much longer than 25, 30 minutes. Uh, I've just whittled it down to, to my favorites. So uh, to start off with, volume is the number of shares, or if you are trading futures, it'll be the number of contracts traded in a single period of time. Uh, volume can be used to identify buying or selling pressure, potential turning points, and you can also use volume as a confirmation tool. Uh, the standard comment is that volume leads price. Uh, so often we'll get a, a volume signal uh, before a strategy kicks in. So you're looking at it in hindsight in that respect. Uh, I don't necessarily trade just because I see something on volume. I do like to still stick to my other technical strategies. Uh, volume has also been used to create various indicators such as accumulation and distribution, uh, volume rate of change and volume price trend. Uh, I never really found too much use for those. Uh, they follow the price too closely. And uh, as I said earlier, I've just covered my preferred indicators today. And we just start off with the straightforward volume bars. Uh, it's probably the simplest way to look at volume. And they can be, you can, on the volume, you can identify peaks and troughs. And this can point to changes in direction. can give you a little heads up that things might be changing. Uh, and there's two things that happen. So either we get a an increase in volume. So here we have an increase in volume. And that is while the price is falling, which is telling me selling pressure. And there's a lot of volume going into the lower prices. And then we get what's called a blow off, which is where the volume peaks out. And then as that price starts to change direction, uh, we can see the volume dropping off a little bit. And that forms uh, a volume peak. So that would be considered a peak, not to be confused with spikes. Uh, and that is very often a lead into a potential change in direction. And one of the reasons that I, I prefer to still stick to my trading strategies is you can see uh, peaks all over the place. Uh, that was pretty nice one for a, for a short. Uh, if you were intending to go short and empty in here, that would have been a decent place to look at it. Um, and then you can see peaks that have no effect at all. Uh, the price never changed direction. Nothing really happened. It just had one of, you know, two up days and a couple of sideways before it moved lower. Uh, so that's uh, one way to do it. You get a volume peak and you have to wait for it to, to pan out. Uh, and in this example here, I just put in the trend line and the price is breaking through the trend line after the volume peak. Uh, and that's quite a nice little forewarning that there's a potential change. And you can just put your trend line in across the top of the price. Uh, when it comes to pattern recognition, this doesn't happen all the time, but it is nice when you see it. Uh, so even though volume leads price as such, it, it's more an increase or a drying up of volume that leads price. But it's not always going to change direction. Okay, so what we have here is the volume, uh, volume spike points out a potential low over there. That's just the one volume bar spiking higher uh, than average. We have a volume trough. So that just means that the volume decreased into the low point. And as the price started to move higher, volume increased. And that gave us uh, just a, a potential turning point. And then the market came back and gave us a rather large volume peak. And that gave me the right shoulder, the head, and the left shoulder confirmed by three volume patterns. That's a really nice uh, trading signal. When you see it, it's really good to, uh, to make the trade. All right, and we can see that as the price is breaking through the neckline, that green bar, uh, green candle over there, we do have a volume spike as well. Uh, remember, volume spikes are just uh, higher than average volume, not necessarily the highest spike in the in history. So it's just a higher volume than average on the breakout. That shows me buying pressure after we had a volume peak, a volume trough, and a volume spike. Now, you could probably draw a peak in there as well if you averaged it out. All right, so that's just a little heads up on, on chart patterns. You can see the same thing in triangles. 
Uh, what I'd like to see in a triangle is actually the volume peak on the break or a volume spike on a break of a triangle uh, or any of the other chart patterns. Uh, increased in volume above the average is normally a good indication of buying or even selling pressure if it's to the downside. So I'm just going to look at spikes quickly. A volume spike can be defined as a day where the volume is higher than the 20-day average and not necessarily the largest spike in, historic, in history. Okay, uh, a large volume spike occurred just as price was breaking an internal support level over there, and we had this massive uh, volume spike. Okay, it's not part of that line. It's actually the volume on the day: 7.5 million shares traded, and we can see in history there were a couple of volume spikes. Uh, the price never really changed direction. We had a little bit of a turn over there, nothing too strenuous, but it certainly showed interest in this particular stock. All right, so uh, the price moved lower after the break, but it doesn't change trend. All right, so volume doesn't necessarily change trend. It changes short-term momentum more than anything else, which is why it's not, uh, for myself, I don't use it as an indicator on its own. And we can see the price came lower and has since bottomed out. There's no real volume changes over here, and the price has started to move higher broke a little bit above resistance there, no confirmation really on volume, but the interesting one is these big volume spikes at a turning point, at a top, and that's a great place to maybe take note of a stop loss, especially if you are trading leveraged products, so if you're trading a CFD on the stock, uh, you see a volume spike at a, at a high point, it's best to be looking to exit, especially if you got in uh, way back there. Alright, so volume's just a heads up. Uh, this is one of my uh, one of my, uh, I, don't know, I don't like to say favorite, but it is one of the volume indicators that I, I watch most often. On balance volume, uh, the indicator is created by adding volume to the indicator on a day that closes higher than the previous day's close. And we subtract volume from the indicator on a day when price closes lower than the previous day's close. So it's all based on closes, higher closes, we add volume, lower close, we subtract volume, and the indicator then goes up and down. The importance of unbalanced volume is actually over a period of time where we can draw things like trend lines. Uh, a break of the trend line can be seen as increased selling pressure in this counter, uh, but it hasn't happened yet. There's the volume spike again. It's the same picture as we looked at on the previous slide. There's the volume spike. And unbalanced volume didn't really sell off afterwards. So OBV combined with the uh, volume bars can really tell us whether there was real selling pressure. So the number of shares on its own is not really enough. But if we start taking the volume and we include the price as a part of the calculation, we start to get a much better view. Uh, and in this example, all, we, all I've done is I've drawn in a trend line on unbalanced volume. And as long as OBV remains above the trend line, I consider this, the stock to be more buying pressure than selling pressure. And again, this is over a period of time. It's not something that uh, will give you any timing. So, you know, just because OBV crosses down over there, there's not a reason to exit or uh, short the stock. On balance volume, when it comes to divergence and the trend line breaks, uh, the orange lines depict price breaking before on balance volume. So here we can see the price breaking above the trend line. And on balance volume at that same time is still trending down. Uh, we can just see it over there. The uh, sorry, the unbalanced volume then gave us reverse di uh, divergence. We had the price making a higher low. OBV was still making lower lows. And that would be called a slingshot if it was on a MACD. Uh, the idea is that there is selling pressure, so there's still quite a bit of volume going on the down days. But on the higher closes, not so much volume, but the price is moving. So the price breaks initially. Not yeah, you, know, you can make the trade because you're technically if you're trading technically you'd be looking to make the trade. On balance volume is just not confirming that particular trade. As the price then returns to the trend line, which we can see at the blue vertical line there, on balance volume starts to break the downward sloping trend line. I just drew it from peak to peak uh, and extended into the future. That is the trade I want to I want to be involved in. So if you did get in early 
that's fine. You would have had to hold through this whole lot. If you waited a while, when the price returned to the trend line, OBV is breaking up, and that's a really uh, good confirmation that buying pressure is finally coming into this particular stock. Okay, so on balance volume is a great way to incorporate volume in your confirmation process. Uh, any standard technicals will tell you, you know, you don't necessarily buy the break immediately, wait for a return to the trend line, and then you buy it. OBV is breaking the trend line at the same time. That is pretty strong buying pressure, and we can just see the result. Obviously, I've cherry picked these a little bit, uh, but if you go and do your back testing and your historical stuff, the one thing you will notice is you need volume. There needs to be decent volume in that stock. If you try this on penny shares, uh, it's not going to help you at all. Uh, OBV then becomes like an RSI. Uh, which is totally useless on those shares. Uh, then money flow RSI, or, or more commonly known as money flow index, is a combination of the relative strength index and volume. So volume is included in the formula. Uh, it is used in a similar way to the RSI with overbought and oversold levels. And on this indicator, it's at 20 and 80. I use a 10 period MFI. And I like to use it in conjunction with the trend or even sometimes, if I'm lucky, in trend change. And we can see the price is coming off here on Discovery, it makes a low. There is slightly increased volume, so we do have a bit of volume over there, but that is on a down candle. So there's selling pressure. There's no volume peak as such, and there's no real spike to indicate a potential change in trend. But the MFI certainly is oversold. So if you are someone who uses an RSI, it would be nice just to add the MFI into that uh, strategy, and it works almost identically. It's oversold, it goes below 20, the trend is down, let's just say we're waiting for moving averages to cross over. That occurs over there after MFI has crossed through the buy line, and that would just be a historical confirmation that there is some buying pressure on this particular stock and that is combined with um, with the relative strength index. So our price is strengthening, and we've got volume in the trade. And that's a good confirmation for the moving average crossover. Uh, on the next one is this downward trend line over here. We've got the orange trend line in there. Blue vertical line shows the money flow index crossing up through 20. Price is breaking above the trend line. That's not quite a bull flag, but the idea is there. Price is breaking above, and I have really nice volume increases. Uh, the big volume is actually that green candle, and there's no candle pattern here, but that green candle was pretty good volume. It was a lot higher than the average, and MFI is crossing up through 20. That is a good confirmation that that trend line break is probably sustainable, because that's what we're looking for here. Is this move sustainable? Is there enough volume? for me to, to feel confident that the price is going to continue moving in my direction. Money flow index divergence, and it's a little bit different to, uh, to some of the other indicators. And divergence should occur in the direction of the trend, and I'm just using the 21 above 89 exponential moving averages for trend. The divergence occurs in the direction of the trend, so I'm looking, while the trend is up, I'm looking for bullish divergence, <clears throat> excuse me, and the MFR must be below 50 on a bullish. So there's the 50 line, MFR is divergent, it's below 50, and that divergence is, and we can see against the price, we've got the falling lows, and again, we could have just had a trend line across there, got divergence, MFR crosses the 50 line, and that can be added to your buying signals if you want to, I prefer just to use a trend line in this case, and that is a nice confirmation of that move upwards. The bearish signal should occur above 50, but always in the direction of the trend. So in this case, what I've got is divergence here, with the price just going higher, and then we've got a second one there, but the trend is up. If I was still in the trade and I see this kind of divergence, I might consider just exiting, draw a little trend line in there, exit on a trailing stop, but I certainly wouldn't be entering short in an uptrend just because MFI is divergent. Uh, it's not enough of a system for me to just you know, go make a trade. Negative divergence, I thought this was a nice example on implants. 
uh, you know, most of you should know that you know, resources are, are pretty weak at the moment, and the platinums are uh, seriously weak. So this long-term downtrend has continued, and what we get here is money flow divergence above 50, and those of you that have watched, have watched my other videos with the trend fishing and so on, the uh, trend fishing signal comes in, prices at the 89, and I've got money flow divergence. Uh, that was just a nice volume included confirmation that volatility is probably going to change. And if you had your overbought and oversold lines in here, that little peak over there is also above 80. Uh, so that was a nice uh, confirmation and a really a decent trade. Uh, in conclusion, and just some comments, uh, volume bars can be a very simple way to learn about volume. The ideas are pretty clean. Volume peak, volume spike, volume trough, they're reasonably easy to see with a bit of practice. Uh, you're welcome to go find them on your charts and send them to me, I'll have a look at it for you. Uh, so the analysis is pretty simple and clean, it's nice and, and neat. Uh, the bars should be used in conjunction with both of the other indicators in the presentation except for divergence. In other words, I want, with the MFI and with on balance volume, I want the volume bars on there as well, so that I can see the spikes, and then I can compare, is that spike, uh, does that spike have any relationship to on balance volume? Is money flow index giving me a signal at the same time I'm getting this uh, you know, greater uh, volume going through the stock? So I do like to have the bars on with the other two indicators. If you're just going to use the volume bars, you don't need the other indicators, but if you use the other indicators, you basically should have the volume bars on there. On balance volume is great for bigger picture indication of the volume trends. It is not averaged out, it's volume added on an up day and volume subtracted on a down day if today's close is lower than yesterday's close. So it's an over time indication of trend without averaging it out. <clears throat> and the MFI gives reasonably clear signals if applied within a trend. Okay, so MFI is great in the direction of the trend with divergence or with the standard overbought oversold levels. On balance volume can be applied across time frames and markets. And that is simply because the volume is added and subtracted and it's not averaged out. Okay, this gives the indicator an open-ended value. It cannot be overbought or oversold. It doesn't cloud the picture. It's basically a trend volume uh, trend, or should I say direct volume trend. Much better over the longer term. And uh, the MFI is similar to the RSI, which is the consistent signals are created in the direction of the trend in the same time frame. In other words, I'm not going to use MFI intraday. Uh, I haven't really... I tested it at some point, I never really uh, you know, took hold, but on balance volume I can apply on the Aussie or the, you know, the Dow, whatever, where there's contracts involved, uh, even on currencies you can see it, but MFI I didn't find to be that reliable, and the reason is very simple, uh, volume on index indexes intraday tend to occur at the same times of the day, at the open you normally get an increase in volume, midday you get a, a lull in volume, and then closer to the end of the day you get an increase in volume. Uh, that throws the MFI totally out of the out of the park. All right, so MFI I prefer to use end of day on shares uh, in the direction of the trend in the same same time frame. Don't need multiple time frame confirmations. And the other side, of course, is that the MFI gives you the best signals at major turning points, but it's extremely difficult to judge that turning point. So if you're looking for extreme turning extreme trend changes, uh, MFI will most likely be firing a signal but it will be against the underlying trend. Those are the best signals, but they're really hard to, to get right. And you, you know, if you're going short, you're only going to be right once out of every 10 or maybe 15 trades. At the end of a downtrend, so let's say we are, at the moment, we've got this whole Greece scenario going on in the Eurozone and, and whatever. If the market does crash, you put MFI on a weekly chart, it will be, in my opinion, as a really good indicator to pick the the bottom of that bear trend on the weekly chart. Ah, thank you very much. If there's any questions, please pop them through. Thanks, Warren. Uh, folks, you got questions? Put them in the Q&A box. A couple come through. Uh, ben is saying, how come we don't get volumes on Aussie? Warren, I'm sure I've seen volumes on Aussie. 
Let me go check. Yeah, you do get volume on Aussie. Yeah. Uh, ben, it might be your provider or, your, or, or the, the charting package that you use. But certainly there's volume on Aussie. I've certainly seen it. Um, I think IG doesn't. I don't know if IG offers volume on Aussie. That, that, that ben then says he's with IG. So, yeah, so IG don't do pure Aussie. They're not putting the suffix feed. They do... And now I can't. They, they do an they do an SA forty type of thing, so that's why you're not seeing any volume in that space there. Uh, another question came through, folks. If you got more, drop them in. Uh, Warren, a couple of questions that actually came through via on Twitter. Folks are getting me left, right, and centre. Um, <laughs> no, no, but I'm I'm, I'm up to the task. Uh, question around volume, and in the sense being, is it, so the question's kind of convoluted around the same question. Volume's not a standalone; it's to be used in conjunction with maybe breakouts, maybe a a, 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 a system or something like that. Fair point. Yeah, I like volume as a confirmation. Um, and it normally occurs prior to my indicators, uh, sorry, my strategy firing a buy signal or a sell signal. I do like it if volume has already done so. When it comes to unbalanced volume, that can lead. If there's divergence on OBV, uh, that can often lead, but again, I wouldn't use it as a trigger. It's an analysis tool, not really a trading tool. Uh, ben saying GT. Ben, I haven't been in the GT platform in literally a decade. I don't know. Depends whether they give you uh, pure Aussie or not. That would be the issue as to whether or not they can give you the volume on, on the, the particular product. Uh, Warren, question coming through. Uh, head and shoulders. Uh, often heard that volume is, is perhaps the most important part on head and shoulders. Do you concur with that? I agree to, to an extent. Yeah, head and shoulders can happen without any major volume changes. Uh, what does sometimes happen, for instance, the left shoulder will have greater volume peaks. There will be more volume in the peak, and sometimes the left shoulder's peak uh, has more days in it, so there will be more volume bars. Uh, so you might get that lopsided on the volume. But I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't not trade a head and shoulders because volume doesn't confirm. Uh, but normally speaking, the volume is is pretty good on, on head and shoulders and pretty clear. Cool, cool. Uh, uh, and the same thing, you know, at any one of those turning points on the head and shoulders, you can have a volume spike, a volume peak, or a volume trough. Yeah. I haven't come across where it's always you know, peak on the left and a trough in the middle. Okay, gotcha. But normally it's a variation of that, yeah. Volume on FX? Now, we don't have volume on FX, do we? I mean, it's just a... Yeah, we do. Do we have volume on FX? Well, some, some platforms do. Okay, it depends yeah. again on the platform. Yeah. I don't know of any that don't have volume. Yeah, I, I, I haven't changed, traded FX in such a long time that I honestly don't know. I, I, I would have figured. Yeah, I mean, no, these days they include it. Okay, but no. you must remember that when you when you look at volume on FX, if it's a if it's a provider, so uh, let's say a platform provider, uh, they doing they offering you the leverage and everything. There's no market for forex. The provider will should somewhere tell you what that volume is that they offer. Is it interbank volume where they've maybe signed an agreement with five, six, ten different banks and that volume is then fed into their system or is it purely on that CFD provider's uh, traded volume? In other words, all their participants, their clients. Uh, so you can have, to, you will have discrepancies from one platform to another as to how many uh, contracts are traded. Yeah, and that depends how big and busy that platform is, but they're showing you their client base. That's it. Yeah. Ladies and gents, I'm not seeing more questions coming through, so we will park it there. Video will be up. I'm going to say tomorrow because I'm battling flu, so I'm going to go have a hot toddy, and that might wipe out the rest of my day. Um, appreciate your time. Warren, really appreciate your time. Uh, Warren, will be back again next month. We'll set up a date and a time and a topic. Uh, everyone, thanks very much. All the best. Cheers. Thanks, Simon. Thanks, everyone. Cheers.